Shalom, welcome. Today we're going to continue Torah 56, which is the Torah about kingship. And we learned yesterday that every Jew has kingship, has an aspect, a spark in their soul of this power to give over, to rule, to lead, to guide. And you'll see it in so many ways where Jews just, just they can't help it. They're just looking, you know, always going for the front office, you know. And, uh, but it's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because somebody needs to, to take responsibility and leadership. But Makom Ish, Ish. says, in a place where there is no one to lead, then be the leader, be the person. Don't let the ship just keep going in circles. Okay, so we learned about this power, but we understand also there's a hidden kingship and there's a revealed kingship. The hidden kingship, everybody knows, it's the boss, it's the senator, it's the president, it's the, the chief rabbi, whatever, but, and it's also oftentimes the wealthy guy, you know, but there's also the kingship that of a person who doesn't, no one knows it's him, and maybe even he doesn't know it's him. And this kingship is this ability to give over the power of Hashem into the world. To keep the balance between good and evil, you know, well, as close to, to 51% as possible. Today, I would hate to guess about where that's holding. But the idea is that we're always trying to bring the life force of God into the world, which is the power of the renewal, the power of desire, the power of holiness, the power of goodness. All the good things, all the good rivers run back to the source which is Hashem. Now the second paragraph today, Tzari, Kol Achana, everyone, Lebli Lishtamesh Ima Bechinot HaMochut Sheyesh Lo Lehanato Letzorko Any kingship that you have, you should not use it for your own purposes, your, your own pleasures. It wasn't given to you for that. Shelo Tiye Bechinot HaMochut Etzlo Keeved Malaot Havato Because then, if you use your kingship for your own pleasure, then you're like a servant who, you know, uses his position to fill up his own desires. And that's not why a person is made king. Rather, the kingship should be in this aspect called the free son, the free child. What does that mean? Well, King Solomon said, Ashrecha Eretz Shemalkech Ben Chori. Fortunate you are the land whose king is the son of a free man. Well, aren't all kings free? I mean, they're the kings. They're the ones who set the rules and make the, uh, the judgments in court, etc., etc. No, a Ben Chorin is someone who has his free choice preserved, that he does not make choices from his desires, from his agenda, from his needs. Not from his bills and not from, you know, his debts. A truly free person makes choices from an under awareness of God, God's place in your life and your choices that he needs you to make, that wants you to make, that will help the world and help you as well. So fortune is the land, King Solomon says, whose king is free. Now, King Solomon, you say, the greatest of men, the wisest of the wise. But he had some difficulties, you know, with uh, certain aspects in his private life, as is known. And um, he had a lot of wives, and they practiced idol worship, and they brought impurity into the palace, which is a very, very serious thing, because the palace is, you know, expected to be preserved in purity. And when, they, when those uh, occult practices were brought in, it confused the good and the evil until so Solomon himself suffered from that in a very big way, as the Midrash teaches us, that he started to deal with demons and they tricked him. Okay, but without going to that, he, the, the idea is that if you have a king, you want him to be free to make the choices that are best for the kingdom, not for himself. That the free kingship itself should be free. And then not to use it for our own pleasure. You know, in yeshiva, you know, you sit every day and you learn and new guys come in and they'll, they'll ask you, you know, 
can I make you a cup of coffee? Well, that's, there's nothing wrong with that if he's making a coffee for himself. But if he's doing it just for you because you're you, and the same goes for in the office or any other uh, situation, then all of a sudden his power, his kingship, is being used for his own personal pleasure. Well, they say, what about a mother or a father? Can't a mother or father ask their son or daughter to make a cup of coffee for them or to bring the cold water from the refrigerator? What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is very, very fine. If I'm doing it because I'm lazy, because I want to take advantage of the opportunity of my power, that since I've invested with the power as a father, or as a boss, or as a king, then I'm using it still for my pleasure. But if I'm doing it because I want to give a teaching, or I want my son to have the experience of knowing what it's like to help others. Because that's how, the only way children learn to help other people is because they learn it from their, their parents or their teachers. Our nature is to be selfish. That's the way we're born. 99, let's say, percent of the uh, population. Selfishness is part of the code of survival. But it's certainly not the code of how you get into heaven, the highest realms. Renachman says, how do you get into heaven? With your little piece of anava, whatever little anava, humility that you can generate and create in this world, that's your ticket to the world to come. Okay, but the idea here is not to use it for our own pleasure, but you can, you can if I say you know, to my son, oh, you're going to this city, can you pick me up something? That's fine. But if I say, go to the city, and he doesn't want to go because he's got to do something else, that's a problem, even though he's my son. So we have to always check our kavana. Now, if I know that it's good for him and he's going to, other good things are going to happen, look, go here and go there and go there and pick up money and, and all kinds of other things that he's going to want to do, that's different also. Okay. That the kingship is free. So Mordechai is an example of this idea of the king. He wasn't literally the king, but he was the, the chief rabbi of his generation, if you will. The leader, the spiritual leader. And of course he helped save Am Yisrael from Ahasuerus and Haman HaRasha. So Mordechai is this paradigm of the tzaddik of each generation because each generation has one tzaddik who reaches the highest level he's like the faucet that opens up the flow of water to everybody else it's begin at Mordor, and his nickname the in aramaic like we call him the the pleasant more is like frankincense drawer it means it flies it, it's the vapor that that floats in the good places when you smell a good smell from a distance it's like ah what was that tree? Well, it, it, here we're tell, he's telling you it's the tzaddik. It's Mordechai. Shehamarut, ayinu amarachut, that the bitterness, more is also lush and bitter. If you translate from Aramaic to Hebrew. Hayinu amarachut, that there's a bitterness in being king. Yesh la dror. But drawer is the name of a bird that's, that's very hard to catch, almost impossible, right? So it's a symbol, therefore, of freedom. So it's this free scent or this bitterness that is set free. Now, that's a nice thing. Think about it, to set free the bitterness. Now, there was a lot of people carry bitterness all their lives. They're bitter about their parents, they're bitter about their job, they're bitter about their basic bank account, they're bitter about getting ripped off. There, there's so many things that can make us bitter. Even our spouses and our children. But here he's telling us something. In, in, woven into the language. That the bitterness can be set free. If I'm using my kingship, for my own purposes, if I'm selfish, then it's going to turn bitter. 
to some place along, somewhere along the way, someone's not going to do what I say, and now I'm going to be king and I'm going to be embarrassed, and so what are you going to do, put the guy to death because he didn't make your coffee? There were kings that used to do things like that. So if we misuse your, the power of your kingship, even if it's just in your living room, then it turns bitter eventually. So you see, you can't really win. Except if you do it for the sake of other people, for their goodness, for, for Hashem's will, for the Torah. Because the real king is only one, and that's Hashem. And we want that to happen. That's part of the whole messianic redemption is the idea that we're, we are here to make him king and not ourselves. But we can use the kingship that we have to serve Hashem. That you're allowed, as king of your house, you're allowed to say, you know what, today I'm going to yeshiva. Tonight I'm going to the Kotel and I'm going to pray. You know, things like that. That you're allowed to, to, to use your kingship to, to come closer to Hashem. You know, and that might entail all kinds of subtleties that we're not going to go into here. But it's clear. And he tells us that the one way that you can use your kingship is not advised too often. <speaking in Hebrew> to warn and to rebuke people that are underneath your kingship. The people like your children or your employees, to warn them and to rebuke them is a dangerous business. But that is part of the job of the king. Okay, and so now we know from other places in Rabbi Nachman that, that we have to be very, very, very careful when it comes to this type of usage of your power. Because you make enemies very quick and you'll ruin a good atmosphere at a dinner table and it, it, it goes far, trust me. And this idea of rebuking is still dependent on the kingship that you have that's revealed and hidden. Whether he is a person who rules at home, but and he's responsible, according to the Torah, our father is responsible to tell his children, do this, don't do that. Now, if you tell them ten times and they still don't do it, it doesn't mean you slap them. It doesn't mean that you, you know, kick them out on the street. It means that you have a problem. It needs to be dealt with with a lot more wisdom than just slapping or throwing somebody out. If a person has more rulership, he's even more responsible to warn those who are under his power. Because that's why he was given the power in the first place. To, to help bring God's will into the world means to help bring people away from going against the Torah. And so, you know, uh, this is a very subtle thing because people, you know, have a hard time saying no. It's a very uh, s uh, subtle matter to say no to somebody. Now, it's not easy to say no if someone asks you for money, you don't have any. But let's say you have a lot of money and someone asks you for money. Then what do you do? How much do you give? And what if your children want more? Or they want things that you know are not going to be good for them. Or they want to do, go to places that you doubt that they're going to be good for them. So you see that the kingship that you have is dependent on the, power, the amount of influence you have. And if your influence is weak, then you have to be even more, more careful how you use it. And if your influence, influence is strong... You have to know that there's a price for that. So to be king, to be a selfless king, is to only think, okay, what does God want from my son? What does God want from my daughter, from my wife, from my grandchildren, from my employees? What is going to be best for them in his eyes? The selfless king has to have that idea in place or his power will be most likely abused. And then we've accomplished nothing. And then we've been given this kingship for no good reason. 
And God chose the Jewish people for this job because he gave them the Torah. And he gave them the Torah because he wanted his will revealed in the world. And he saw that the people were not listening and they didn't want the Torah. So he, he, he chose the Jewish people because they're stubborn and they're, well, they have a long tradition of rebelling from, uh, shall we say, uh, undisciplined authority. I think that might be a good way to, fra fra to phrase it. Undisciplined authority means kings that use their kingship for their own pleasure. Over and over the Jewish people have been subjected to these kind of things for thousands of years. But it doesn't mean it's okay for us to do it. It just means that we have an example of what not to do. And that starts out at home, starts out over those who are closest to us, and it spreads according to the jobs that God gives you in this world. So we should all be blessed with that understanding that the big king is not really a, a very wise ambition. If God wants you to be king, if he made you to be king, that's his business. But to want to be king means I'm sticking my neck way out over the rail, and we don't know what's going to come flying by. And uh, when you're king, you have a lot of other things happening. People are going to judge you, and people are going to question every move you make. Are you ready for that lifestyle? So, but the selfless king is the one, he, he's not worried about all, all of those things because he really, really and sincerely wants what's best for everyone according to God's infinite knowledge and wisdom. And we're just trying to be a channel for that, for others. And so we need to know that this over and over. We can't just learn it once here today and expect that it's going to be integrated into our software. No, but we have to learn it over and over and practice it and fall and get up and do it again. And with, with effort and blessing from Hashem, we will achieve that idea, this idea of, of the trying to do His will and help others as well. God bless you all. Have a great day.